Coach Miller, then open to questions again for the student athletes. Once again, please identify yourself and your affiliation prior to asking the question. Coach? Well, I thought it was a, a really a hard fought game between two teams that played the game very hard. Uh, I credit Xavier a lot, thought they had a great game plan. We knew going into the game that they're going to play their 1 3 1, and we also knew that they were excellent in getting the ball inside. They remind me a lot of Gonzaga and how they use their big guys to score and then throw the ball out. Uh, so we expected a tough game, and that's exactly what we got. Um, I feel bad, you know, last couple of weeks playing against places and people that I've been, it's very difficult. And, uh, you know, I'm proud to say that at one point I was associated with Xavier and I certainly wish them well. Uh, always tough to see a season end. <clears throat> And uh, when you end it, sometimes it's easy to move on. But in this case, for me, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot more difficult. On our end, very proud of these guys. I thought there were a couple trying moments in the game where if we didn't have the resolve experience of being through what we've been through the last couple of years, we could have folded. But we hung in there, and um, our defense and rebounding eventually took over, and we ended up winning a hard-fought battle. We're going to open to questions for the student athletes first. Ted's got first. Stanley, congratulations. I w uh, with the, I'm with the Beast 980 in LA, and I'm curious, as geeked as you must be right now, how much more special is it to do it in this building? Um, I think it's really special um, to be in LA and win, um, which is it's kind of like it's weird because you know even though I'm home on the road, it's almost like you know I'm super focused on what we what we have to do at hand. Um, this is not a vacation in any type of sort like that. You know, you only get one time to do um, one trip, you know, this year to do, um, get to the Sweet 16, get to Elite Eight. So it's time, you know, we win it. So I've been really focused on um, everything we have planned as a team. And uh, we've been pretty busy, um, you know, with uh, scouting and stuff like that. And it's always good to get sleep after a long flight. Um, and, you know, hard game, it's always good to get sleep and stuff like this. So um, I actually live in Orange County as well. So um, a little hour trip and with traffic, maybe two. So. <laughs> Zach, you're up next. Zach Braziller, uh, New York Post, uh, for either Stanley or Caleb. TJ, you know, there's a lot of positive things said about him before tonight, and I guess tonight just further cemented him. What do you think it is about him in these clutch moments that he seems to just come up with play after play? Um, you know, over the season, T TJ's really developed into the, into the rock on our team, the leader. Um, he's someone that, you know, in, cl in clutch situations, everyone on our team is confident with him, him having the hands and the ball in his hands. Um, uh, it, he's just a great basketball player, and, and like I said, we're all confident in him. He always makes the right play. Paul Bovin, uh, Arizona Republic, and uh, Caleb. I, by nature of your position, you're always facing a lot of tough talent inside. What was 270 pounds of Stainbrook like to battle with? It seemed like you guys are having some good, good fights. Um, you know, he's a great basketball player. Um, you know, his size, uh, he does a great job of using it. His team does a great job of getting him the ball in positions where he can be successful. Um, with him, it's tough because he's not only a good scorer, but he's also a great passer. And that was something that we, we knew uh, we had a game plan for tonight. Um, but he's a great basketball player. He did, he did a, great, a great job today. Um, but I think our resolve was just was too much for them. Back here, please. Sam Pacini, CBSSports.com. Uh, Caleb and TJ, do you guys have any initial thoughts on getting a chance to avenge last season's uh, loss in the West Regional Final and getting a chance to go to the Final Four? Um, you know, obviously it's a, it's a big game to, you know, return to the Elite Eight and play the exact same opponent as we did last year and come up short. But... You know, we're going to take it, you know, as a as any game like like we would be playing any anyone else. And it doesn't matter if we're playing Wisconsin or if we were playing North Carolina. We would game plan the same. And, uh, you know, it happened to be Wisconsin. So we're not making this game any bigger than it needs to be. We're going to go right here, then we'll get you. Okay, I'm Manny Nunez with uh, Global Basketball. Game was going back and forth until uh, Steinbrook actually committed three fouls within a minute and a half late in the second half. You guys had control of the game, but you guys feel as if that was kind of the big turning point uh, to finish the game off? Um, I think the big turning point in the game was uh, our rebounding. Uh, we were getting out rebound the whole game. Um, the first war, which is, this, which is the first four minutes of the second half, uh, we got rebounded by five. And I think in the, in the wars when he's out of the game, 
maybe having a 270 pound body out of the way to get rebounds. Um, we started getting rebounds and we got the advantage on the boards and you know, story of the season for us, you know, when we defend and rebound, um, it's hard to beat us. Okay, we have the very back, please. Lindsay Schnell, Sports Illustrated. Uh, TJ, I'm gonna test your memory here. You said yesterday that all you wanted for your birthday was a sweet 16 win. I'm curious, what are some other cool birthday presents you've gotten over the last 22 years? Um, you know, this has to be the best one, but I honestly can't even remember the presents that I've gotten. Uh, maybe a bike when I was like eight. That, that might have been Steeler my football helmet. <laughs> he, used, he used to run around in his backyard pretending he was Franco Harris. All right, we're going to have Zach again, please. Zach Brazil, New York Post. TJ, it, it obviously was Harry there for a while. They were up four. Was there any thought in your mind that this could be it, or were you just determined not to let your, season, your career end tonight? Um, you kind of said it there. Uh, I, I'm determined to not let it end, and I, and I don't want it to end. Um, you know, we're kind of playing with a mentality of refuse to lose and do whatever it takes. And, you know, a lot of teams would have folded in our position tonight, but we showed a, a lot of heart and resiliency. And, um, you know, big players made big-time big plays, and I'm, I'm proud of all my teammates. Go right here in the second row, please. Uh, TJ, where did you feel your game start to change? You looked a little bit frustrated in the first half. Yeah, um, in the first half, you could have said I was practically playing for Xavier how many times I passed him the ball. And um, I couldn't hit a water if I fell out of a boat from three. But, you know, we just kept fighting. And, and in the second half, I got rolling a little bit. And I got to credit all my teammates. They were the ones that uh, got me the ball and, and, you know, made the plays. Roger, go ahead. Roger Rubin from the New York Daily News. For Caleb and TJ, you know, you guys are getting this rematch tomorrow. And... You know, a lot of times t teams look back on the last loss of the previous season and it drives them. Is that a, a game that you have spent much time thinking about between then and now? Yeah, um, after we lost to them, it gave us a long time to think about it. And we watched them go to a Final Four and, and lose at the buzzer to Kentucky. And, you know, we thought that should have been us. But, you know, that's driven all of us to work as hard as we did in the summer and as hard as we did this season to be as good as we are. And, um, we have great respect for Wisconsin, but you know, we're going to come out ready and uh, play Arizona basketball. Um, you know, even though uh, last year our loss to them was devastating for all of us on the team, um, it kind of provides a, a level of familiarity um, with how they play. Um, you know, they're, they're a very similar team to the one they had last year. Um, so, you know, our game plan might be a little bit different this year. Um, we, like I said, the, the level of familiarity um, we'll hopefully kind of sway it in our way, but we're all looking forward uh, to being in the Elite Eight. It's an accomplishment. We're 34 and three. Um, you know, we're 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 excited to to just be in the Elite Eight and, and be able to play. Right here in the second row, please on the right. Jim Daniels, NBC Sports Radio Network. For all three of the guys, really, uh, if you make it to the next level to get the NBA, you might have a five, 10, 12 year career and a chance to get an NBA title for a number of years. An NCAA title, very fleeting, a very short window of time for you to get that done. You've got another chance this year. How do you keep the moment from getting too big for you and just look at this as another game? Stanley, you want to start with that? Um, yeah, you know, I, I, I think it's always, um, when you get an opportunity like this to get to the Final Four, you know, you always want to take advantage of it. But like I said before, um, especially as a freshman, you know, never playing in the tournament before, it's always just our, our, our days and our, the way we prepare for games are, are regular. You know, we've been doing this since, you know, November, since I got here from, from the first scrimmage that we have. And that's all on Coach Miller. You know, he makes everything pretty much easy to, to learn because everything's so, so, so similar uh, for me. So I know what's expected of me. Um, they know what's expected of them. You know, everybody knows what's expected. So we just got to go out and play. Obviously, the stakes are higher. And the game's a little bit more intense, but once we settle in the game, um, everything you know gets to be regular. And as long as we defend and rebound, um, we should be fine. Caleb or TJ, um, we're just going to take it uh, one moment at a time. Um, you know, I think we do a great job uh, as a team of of kind of taking a step back and, and just having fun out there, playing hard. Um, you know, we're 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 lucky that we have the opportunity to still be playing this late in the season. Um, we're gonna we're gonna you know cherish that and and just go out there and have fun and that's that's really how you just you know get through. Yeah, kind of what Caleb and Stanley said. Um, we're not gonna get, make this game bigger than it already is, and uh, 
you know, we're going to go over their stuff tomorrow, watch a lot of film, and, you know, prepare like we always do. It's, I, I know, it, we all know it's a big game. It's the Elite Eight and to go to the Final Four, but, um, you know, we can't overhype it, and we just have to play our game. Last question for the student athletes is going to be in the back, please. Uh, TJ, kind of a weird game, really disjointed, and then right before the last media timeout, you wave off Brandon. He's trying to set a screen for you and take that three. It was a big shot. It, there, was there something in that moment that you decided, I'm taking this no matter what? Yeah, um, you know, I saw they were playing off me, and, uh, you know, I kind of just shot it. It was hoping it went in because <laughs> I was abysmal from three tonight, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad it did, and it kind of sparked us, and, um, you know, even if I'm shooting bad, I'm going to keep shooting, and my teammates and coach just told me to keep shooting, and, and I did. All right, with that, we're going to let the student athletes go. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll see you tomorrow. Questions for Coach Miller? We'll start with Zach. Uh, Zach Brazil, New York Post. Coach, you talked about how tough these last few games were for you personally facing, obviously, people you're so familiar with. Will it be any relief facing someone you're not necessarily friends with? In, in some ways, yes. Um, it's just hard. You know, the tournament is difficult in and of itself to prepare and know that if you lose, you're done. But when you play against the people that you've worked with for long periods of time and you've been in the trenches with, you've been in games like this with before, it's hard when they're on the other side. And same thing with some of the people that cheer for them. Uh, you know, you're used to them cheering for you. It feels different. But this isn't about me. Obviously, tonight was a Sweet 16 game. And uh, we're here in the West Regional because we've earned it. And um, I thought, you know, the atmosphere in the building was great. Um, and I know it'll be terrific again on, on Saturday. But we're very excited to, to continue to be playing. Right here in the third row, and then we'll go to Ted. Paula Boven, Arizona Republic. Um, Sean, you were talking about resilience and how your team showed it. Was Caleb an example of that? He seemed to really s sort of step up in the second half of the mm -hmm. second half. Caleb is the one guy on our team who doesn't get enough credit. A lot of times he's not our leading scorer, and we have a balanced group. So our leading scorer a lot of times gets the credit for playing or, or the reason we won. But he does his job is how I would describe him. And there aren't many front court players that can play Stainbrook one-on-one -on -one like he did. Now, Stainbrook had his moments, and if you look, 17 and 10 is a great night. But he had one offensive rebound, and one of the strategies for us is – we didn't want him to provide 10 to 20 points for his teammates because they do a great job of throwing it into him, and he's such a terrific passer that all of a sudden the floodgates open from three or they get the ball moving, and the reason it started to move is because you had to help on Stainbrook, and now it's, it's both. He's not only scoring inside, but their perimeter attack is thriving because of him. I believe we gave up one three-point shot because of our help on him, and we tried our best to let Caleb play one-on-one. -on -one. Once Caleb got four fouls, we mixed in a trap. I thought we had one really good trap, maybe one or two terrible traps. Uh, but they're a difficult team to defend. The reason we won, in my opinion, is Caleb's double-double and his very good defense. Doing it, what we, He did what we asked him to do. And, uh, I thought that was as big of a reason as we've advanced as, as any. Ted, go ahead. Coach, uh, Ted Sobel, the Beast 980 here in L.A., and I'm curious the familiarity of the Badgers mm -hmm. and how that will affect your preparation into this one, also from a, a psychological standpoint with the guys being as psyched as you, I'm sure they will be. And are you going to wear a different color red? There will be a lot of red in here. Yeah. Well, we've had all year to think about Wisconsin. And, uh, you know, a lot like us, they're on a two-year run that's really unprecedented. You know, I'm, I think you look at what we were last year, I think we lost five. So we're 69 and eight over two years. I think if you put their record up over that same two-year period, they're right there. So we've had a group of guys that, that both in their program and in ours who've really gotten the job done. Last year's game could have gone either way. I think they know that. Um, but... The one advantage that I do think we have is Wisconsin's style is so unique, the way they move the ball, the way they play their man-to-man -man defense. Kaminsky is a unique player. 
the fact that we prepared for them, we've played against them, I think that we at least know what, what to expect. So in some ways, maybe that's to our advantage. Now, Stanley wasn't here last year, and they have some new faces, et cetera. But I do think that familiarity in some way has, has to help us. We'll go Jill. Jill Painter Lopez, Fox Sports West. Uh, Coach, in this last year from uh, that loss, have you guys have you guys used that as a motivational tool? Have you guys talked about was that Wisconsin loss a lot? Have you guys stayed away from it totally? What how much has that been talked about? Well, you know, of course, it's um, it's motivation to see if you can get back to this level. Uh, very seldom are you right there in an Elite Eight game that you lose in overtime, and then the next year you're back, let alone playing the same team. So that there's some uniqueness to that. But I think a lot of our players were motivated this off season to come back and, and make a run at this. And uh, here we are. And, and that's really to our credit, as you know, especially in this tournament, that's not an easy thing to accomplish. So uh, we have to take advantage of it over these next couple of days and uh, do the things that make us a good team. I know Wisconsin's going to do the same, and we'll see how it goes. Lindsay, go ahead. Uh, Sean, what did you think of that shot that TJ took? Such a weird game, and how big was it for you guys in that moment? You know, he's done that a number of times over the last two years where he doesn't have a very good night shooting the ball. But when he takes the big one, it seems to go in. I think that reveals a lot of his character. But he, uh, I, tonight, he let some of his early misses affect him. And in the first half, he was not himself. I think that coupled with Rondé going down and then getting two fouls, two of our key players really weren't our, themselves. And, Obviously, we're playing against a very good team. In the second half, Rondé emerged more, but uh, TJ was much more himself in the second half. But he, he has the ability to take the big shot and make it. I think that's one of the reasons that we're here today. Was I nervous when he shot it? No, as long as he takes a good shot, that's a good shot for us. And a wide open shot for him, uh, you know, he, he's one of our best shooters when, he, when his feet are set. Zach, other side, on the aisle here. Zach, this is Derek Post. I'm not, not sure how much of the first game you watched, but it seemed like both games were very similar. You know, the, the favorite struggles for about 30 minutes and then pulls away late, and both teams kind of point to their experience and their resolve. What's going to happen uh, Saturday when both teams are kind of equally experienced and equally tough? And It's going to be a great game. It is, and we, like I said, respect Wisconsin not just because we lost to them in last year's Elite Eight, but we've followed them. We've watched them all year. They've had a tremendous year, and they have a terrific team, and uh, we know they play their brand of basketball. I hope it comes down, you know, on our end to, uh, to a couple plays at the end, and this time maybe we'll make them. Right here on the far right, please. Uh, Sam Bassini, CBS Sports .com. Uh How is Rondé's knee look like? Uh, is he is he all good? I think or? he's okay. Yeah, I think he was scared. Uh, he has a, maybe a low grade sprain, but he was able to obviously play in the second half. He had some great rebounds that helped us win the game in the second half. But as you know, he's a very tough kid. Uh, we'll take tomorrow. Be smart with him, and I think he should be fine uh, by Saturday. We have time for a couple more questions. But seeing none, we're going to let you go. Thank you, Coach. Yep. We'll see you here tomorrow.